Hello everyone and welcome to another Flux tutorial. My name is Zach Peterson. In this video, we're going to run over how to get started building a shield board in Flux. Now, if you're familiar with platforms like Arduino or ESP32 or Raspberry Pi, you know that you can add on to one of these boards using a shield board. These boards are very easy to work with in Flux thanks to the template system, or you can of course build your own version of the shield board. I'm gonna show you how to do all of that in this video. Make sure to hop into Flux and follow along. Now, if you wanna get started building a shield board in Flux, there are two things you have to do. First, you need to create a part that defines the pinout for the shield board that you want to build. And then, of course, you need to know some of the dimensions so that you can create the footprint for that part. Then you need to place that part into a board outline. So you actually need two projects in order to create a shield board. Now, to create a custom shield, we first need this part with a pinout. So on screen, I have here a part with a pinout that matches the STM32 Nucleo 32 board. Now, if we just zoom in in the schematic, you can see here that we have all of the pins already labeled. So each of these pins is one of the pins that you will see alongside uh, the pinout on the Nucleo 32 board. So here in the schematic, we've just placed each of the pins. Then once we go into the PCB layout, what we're actually looking at here is going to be the footprint. So this footprint just shows where each of those holes need to be in order to interface with the Nucleo 32. So that's all we've done in this part. Remember, this is a part, and you can see here in the lower right-hand corner in the properties area that part type is MCU. It isn't actually an MCU. This is essentially holes for a pin header, but um, that's neither here nor there. What's important is that in this footprint, each of these holes is placed in a particular location, and those locations correspond to the location of the pins along this pin header on the Nucleo 32 development board. So you're developing this part to specifically match the connections that you want in your Nucleo 32 in this example. Now, let's just suppose we didn't need all of these connections. Well, you could certainly create this part so that maybe you only had, let's say, half of the connections. So you could eliminate, let's say, this bottom uh, set of, uh, let's say, 24 connections here uh, from, from here down. So you could certainly do that. Um, and that's going to be the case if you want to have, let's say, a shield board that only takes advantage of specific pins coming off of your microcontroller board. So once you have this part created, this is the first step that you need to complete in order to then create a shield board that's going to match the STM32. So make sure to follow the standard part creation guidelines when creating this part and that way you will have something that's going to match the pinout and the pin location on your target uh, development board. So once this part is created, how do we then use this to create a shield board that is going to interface with the STM32? Well, what we've done here is we've just created the pinout. Now we need to place that pinout into a PCB. So in this next portion, we're going to actually design the PCB that's going to work with this pinout. So to do this, we just copy the project name here. And of course, this needs to be published into the library. It can be published privately or publicly, but either way, we copy the part name and then we go over to the public library and just type it into the search bar and you see it comes up right there. Then I can just drag it into this schematic and now once I have it in my schematic I can then create a board outline around this pinout. So once this is in the schematic if I just go here into PCB once it loads you'll see that the board size is just the default board size. 
So if I were going to use this to interface with the STM32 Nucleo as it sits now, um, what would happen is I would have a set of holes here in this default board layout, but you can see this default board size is really big. So we'd have essentially a really big shield board that's connecting to this really small microcontroller board. So that's obviously pretty awkward. So what we would need to do now is basically position this and then resize the layout so that the board matches the board size that we want to attach to the shield board. Now typically what you would do is you would take this layout and you would resize the board so that it perfectly matches the shield board. Now the way you would do that is of course with the layout rules and you would want to add in some object specific rules. So the first one is of course size or size and X and Y. So if I just add in the size rule here and start typing in my uh, dimensions, let's say 20 millimeters, 50 millimeters. You can see here that it resizes the layout and I can then move my uh, pinout into that PCB. So now I've just totally placed my layout inside of this PCB. There's a little bit of a mismatch because the dimensions aren't exact, um, but you get the idea. All I have to do is just select the layout object here on the left panel, and then I can just type in my size in X and Y in the object specific rule. Now I've set this layout size to 20 millimeters by 50 millimeters in order to get a close match to the actual size of the STM32 Nucleo board, but remember this is a custom shield board. There's really nothing forcing me to use that specific board size. That is the standard board size because one of the standard practices is to match this shield board size with the microcontroller board size. But if I wanted to, I could have, let's say, a slightly smaller shield board. So maybe instead I make this 40 millimeters tall. And so in that case, you can see here, what I've done is I've basically compressed the board size in the Y direction. And now the pin headers are much closer match to the length of this board. So the actual STM32 Nucleo board is going to overhang underneath this shield board once the two are attached together. So you could certainly do that, and you will sometimes see some shield boards that have pretty interesting shapes. They don't have to perfectly match the microcontroller board that they're going to connect to. So that's one of the fun things about creating a custom shield board is you really do have the power to go through and set a custom pinout and a custom board size if you really want to. So in this example, what we've done is we've created a custom shield board and this custom shield board could immediately be used to add uh, some new components and we could then start placing components in this area in the shield board. But what if we wanted to instead make multiples of this shield board? What's the workflow for doing that? Well, the best way to do that is to take this shield and then go up here to the top menu and then make this shield a template. So you can see here, I've already made this shield a template. Once I've made this shield into a template, I can immediately create new projects from this template. So I can just select this particular template and you can see here it is creating a new project immediately. And once this new project is created, this is the project that I would wanna start adding new circuitry to in order to make my custom shield that I'm actually going to you know, produce and manufacture. So this one is just going to be used as a template and I could actually just rename this, let's say Nucleo-32 dash short dash template. So this is a short board and it's for a Nucleo 32 and I'm using it per purely as a template. So this would be the template that I would use to create a new project from. And once I have this project created, I can then start adding stuff into this board from the public library, just like I would with any other project in Flux. So all you have to do is just find stuff you want from the public library, go over to the PCB, and once you have your stuff in the schematic, you can then start adding it into the PCB. Of course, you wanna make all your electrical connections first, um, but once you uh, add this stuff into the PCB, you can start going through placement and routing, just like you would for other projects. Now, of course, once we have this created, 
We know that this took a little bit of time to create, but once we have this created, we can start making new projects uh, as, as often as we want. We just start with our template, go to the top menu, and then create the new project. Or, of course, you can start from your uh, public profile. You can then go up here to New Project from Template, and then select the template that you want to use. But there's an even faster way to do all of this. So the faster way to do this is to just search for templates directly from the top search bar. So if you don't want to use something like this where we had a custom board shape for our template, you can actually find a lot of standardized templates directly from the public library. And all you have to do is just go up here to the search bar and type in the template that you want to look for and it probably exists in the Flux system. So just as an example, let's say I want to use a Nucleo32 template. You can see it's right here. This is the Nucleo32 shield template. I could then take this template and I can just clone it directly. And if I clone this directly, what I'm going to get is a PCB with the standard uh, Nucleo32 footprint, but it's also going to have this board outline built into it. So I'm just going to be able to immediately reuse all of the details and the design rules in this project in a new project. And that new project will be a shield board that perfectly matches the outline of the Nucleo32 microcontroller board. So that's a very quick and easy way to get up and running and start building a new template. And so of course once I go up here and then I clone this project, this project will then appear in my profile and of course you'll see it'll open up here and what I can do is then of course give it a unique name we'll just call it standard shield and then just like with my custom shield I can just start adding stuff into uh, this schematic and then I can start placing it in the PCB layout so that's a very quick and easy way to get up and running immediately with a standardized shield board that is going to match the uh, board size for this STM32 development board. When you can see that once I go here into the PCB layout for my cloned project. Inside my cloned project I already placed a couple of components. You can see the resistor is already right here. I can now go through and make the connections in my schematic and then do the PCB layout just like I would with other boards. Thanks everyone for watching this video. I hope this gives you a useful overview of both the template features for using shields as well as the process for creating a custom shield. If you're watching us on YouTube, make sure to hit that subscribe button and of course check out the links in the description to the documentation and you'll be able to find a link to the template that we used in Flux to create a Nucleo32 shield board. Thanks for watching everybody and of course make sure to start using Flux, follow along with all of our tutorials, and have fun.